everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the fourth episode of my Speak Out Sunday series. I really hope that this series is helping at least one or two of you and if it hasn't yet, I hope that I can help you in the future episodes that are coming up. Today we're going to be talking about anxiety, panic attacks and self-doubt as I know a lot of my followers do suffer with this and I have had quite a few questions about these topics. So without further ado, let's just get on into the video. Now, the first person asks, what does a panic attack actually feel like? And I think panic attacks feel completely different for every individual. Um, for me personally, it feels like someone is sitting on my chest and I can't get any air in at all. It's almost like you're drowning and you're trying to breathe, but there's nowhere to go. Um, my hands get really clammy, I start fidgeting with my hands, my hair, pulling my clothes off, I get really hot um, and overwhelmed and just really fidgety in general. It can also make me feel a little bit sick um, as when your body is in fight or flight mode, um, when your body's fighting to keep yourself not anxious and try to bring yourself back down and um, all the blood will rush to your limbs because those are the most important things to like help you fight um so all the blood will come out of your digestive system and it will stop for a minute because um obviously that's not important when you're trying to fight something um, so that is why you feel a little bit nauseous if you have a panic attack um i learned that in a therapy session and it was actually really reassuring um because it's a weird sensation. Other people can experience panic attacks completely differently, but that is how I have felt when I have had a panic attack. You can look on websites like the NHS website for more information on kind of symptoms of a panic attack, symptoms of anxiety, that kind of vibe, um, just so you can hopefully relate to how that is and to make you feel a little bit more reassured. Um, the next question is, how do I calm down after a panic attack or during a panic attack? And I think it's really important to try and prevent that panic attack. Um, I would usually cup my hands and put them in front of my face because it will get the oxygen back into my lungs quicker than if I was just breathing in the normal air. Also, if you have a brown paper bag, that is really good to put in front of your face and to breathe into it as well. It's the same kind of um, process as the cup tans. Um, but it does work a little bit better. Um, also, there's a thing called square breathing where you breathe in and you imagine yourself at that corner of the square. You then hold it until you get to that corner. You then breathe out till you get to that corner and then you hold it. And then it's a whole cycle. You go over and over again. Um, I know that was a pretty bad explanation. So if I were you, type in square breathing into Google and that should really help you. Um, but that is basically the only kind of way to calm yourself down from a panic attack is to really get your breathing back on track because in a panic attack you obviously lose your breath completely and it's really really hard to get yourself back down and to ground yourself again after that panic attack someone has asked how do i deal with the feeling of loss of control i think when you're feeling that way it's really important to write down exactly how you're feeling journal it scribble it down on a piece of paper anywhere in the notes section of your phone, write it down and work out why you're feeling that way. You're either then gonna gain control of that situation or you're gonna realize that the situation is completely out of your hands. Now, if the situation is completely out of your hands, it's really important for you to know that there is absolutely no point stressing or becoming anxious about the situation as there is nothing you can physically do about it. I know that's really hard to hear and really blunt, but at the end of the day, if you're stressing about a situation that you can't do anything about, it's a complete waste of your time, a complete waste of your energy, and you're gonna feel completely drained. If you feel like you can actually gain control of the situation for whatever situation that may be, then I think it's also important to remember that maybe this is your time to actually try and get back on track and try and feel that sense of control that you have. It's also a really good idea to consult someone that you're close to, like a friend or family member, about these kind of situations and get their perspective on it because sometimes you can become very irrational when you're anxious. And by that, I mean, you can just be completely 
taken over by that anxiety and think things that aren't actually true. Um, so for example, I used to get really, really worried about being sick at school. And I knew deep down that I wasn't gonna be sick at school because I wasn't ill. But every single day I would wake up and tell myself that I was gonna be sick at school. And that is a complete irrational fear. Um, so I think it's really important to then change your thought pattern. Um, so if I was to say, I'm going to be sick at school, I would change it into, I'm not going to be sick at school because I am not unwell. But if I was to be sick at school, I would be absolutely fine. I would have the support around me. I would be okay because it's a normal bodily function. And it wouldn't be embarrassing because everybody is mature enough to understand that somebody is actually poorly and they're not just doing it to piss you off, basically. Um, so... That is kind of my advice on what you can do, especially when you're thinking super irrationally. Keeping motivated on bad days. This is where my gratitude comes in. If I'm feeling super unmotivated on a bad day and I don't want to get out of bed, I will try and write down five to ten things that I am grateful for. It could be as simple as I'm grateful for the lovely weather. I'm grateful for my comfy bed. I'm grateful for my friends. It could be I'm grateful for makeup. It could be literally anything or it could be something a little bit deeper. I'm grateful um, for having someone to talk to. Then I would write down three goals for that day. Now, those three goals can be as simple as having a shower, getting out of bed and doing some colouring. Or they could be as advanced or complex as I'm going to get all my schoolwork done today without a doubt. I am going to go for a long run for 5k and I am going to, I don't know, bake a cake for my friend's birthday. Okay, so they can be as advanced or, or as chilled as possible and by writing them down and by ticking them off, it feels like you have completely conquered the day and it is the best feeling ever. If you're finding it really hard to get out of bed, my advice is to count to five. The five second rule is really important. By the time you get down to one, so you'll go five, four, three, two, one, get out of bed. By the time you get out of bed on number one, you will feel absolutely amazing. And I think this is a really good rule to have. People have asked about social media and how to deal with it on bad days. And I think this is different for every single individual. For me especially, social media doesn't actually affect me at all. I'm very, very lucky to say that I don't really get much hate at all. And if I do, I'm very thick skinned so I can just kind of brush it off. Um, and I don't really get too jealous about other people's lives seeing them on social media because I know that Instagram is a highlight reel and TikTok's just a load of fun and Facebook is just kind of catching up with my friends and family. So for me personally, I would never really take a break from it. I don't feel the need to. Um, sometimes I can feel pressured into posting and I think that is then when I would put out a post just to say, look, I'm not feeling great right now. I'm going to take a break from posting, um, but I will post when and what I want to post, basically. Might not post every day like I usually do, but I will be back very soon. And I think, especially when you're in the public eye, it's important to kind of just put that out there for people um, to know that you're not doing great right now. But it's okay. If I want to post, I will. If I don't, then I don't. Whereas if you're just a normal person, and you don't post on Instagram every day, or you don't, I don't know, post on whatever every day, then if you do need to take a break, take a break. If you think that you're getting jealous by other people's Instagrams, unfollow them. Or if you don't like what you see, or if it makes you feel bad about yourself, unfollow them. There's no point scrolling through someone's perfect Instagram feed and thinking, oh, I wish I looked like that. I wish I had her lifestyle. I wish I lived there. Because at the end of the day, you don't live there. You don't have their lifestyle and you don't look like them. Because that would just be boring if we all were the same. And... I know it can be really hard, especially for the younger generation, to kind of understand that Instagram is not all real. It's a pretty fake app, to be honest. 
I could post a picture of me smiling whilst I'm having a breakdown and people would never know. Sleep. When you're anxious about things especially, it can be really, really hard to sleep. Um, and there are some ways that you can get to sleep a little bit quicker. They won't work for everyone, but it's worth a try. So the first one would be to have a hot cup of milk. If you want to have a hot chocolate, then have that. But um, hot milk has melatonin in it, which is a hormone that is actually the sleep hormone and it can really help you sleep. So have that before you go to bed and get off your phone or your laptop or your iPad at least an hour before you go to bed. Read a book, colour, do something that does not involve a screen or if you are going to have a screen then get some blue light glasses um they can really help i've never had them i've never really had the problem of getting to sleep i've been very very lucky um but apparently these blue light glasses do really help so that you don't have that blue light which makes you stay awake for longer um, if you can't get to sleep, scrolling on your phone is quite possibly the worst thing to do because it will just keep you awake. Um, if you are struggling to get to sleep, what I would say is don't have all the lights on. Turn all the lights off. If you want a little light on, if you're doing some colouring or some reading, have a little lamp on. Get a salt lamp that has this beautiful red light. Um, get some fairy lights to put in your bedroom. Anything. Just so that your body realises that it's night time and it's time to sleep. If you can, try and lie down. Um, but if that's not great, then just prop yourself up. Don't sit up completely straight because otherwise your body will be like, oh my God, it's daytime. Um, so yeah, and also try and weigh yourself out before you go to bed. Um, maybe go for a run a couple of hours before or exercise. Don't go straight before you go to bed because if you go straight before you go to bed, your endorphins will kick in and you'll be like, woo, let's go do something. Um, so a couple of hours before you go to bed, do that, do some exercise, go for a walk. If you haven't been out in the day, get some fresh air. And yeah, I hope that helps some of you get to sleep. If worse comes to worst, consult your doctor about it because sleep is super important and you can get sleeping tablets. How do you deal with people saying that you're lying about your mental health illnesses? Um, for me personally, this has happened a little bit, not crazy amounts, but a little bit. Um, it's quite hard to take in because when you have something like this, you don't want to have that. And by telling somebody that they're lying, that they have it is even worse because it's like, I don't want to have bipolar but I have that and now that I have that, you're telling me that I'm lying, which is just crazy because obviously if you're somebody like me, he likes to create awareness and you will go above and beyond to post stuff that is quite personal to help other people. And people can sometimes see that as attention seeking. I absolutely hate those words, attention seeking. Since I was younger, I was always called attention seeking when in reality, attention seeking isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes if you're not getting that attention that you need, it can be very, very hard. And by getting it from other people, sometimes it can be seen as this attention seeking when in reality, it's actually just you wanting to be loved. Um, so I think if somebody is telling you that you're lying, then just try and keep it on the down low say okay thank you for your opinion doesn't matter i've got this and this is how i'm gonna deal with it end of story they're not a professional the professionals know what they're doing they're just somebody on the internet or somebody that you know that has pretty much no idea about mental health issues last question is about self-doubt and not feeling good enough now, I would really recommend positive affirmations. So what you have to do is write down three times, I am. So I am, I am, I am. 
and after those three I want you to write down three positive things that you are. So I am making a difference, I am powerful, I am strong, I am caring, I am kind, I am a good daughter, I am a good son, I'm a good dancer, I'm a good netball player, I am a good baker, um, I am productive, I am sympathetic, anything, three positive things that you are, then I want you to walk up to your mirror, look at yourself and tell you yourself those three things that you are. Every single day, say those things. If you can think of other things, say other things too. I think it's so, so, so important nowadays, especially in this society that we live in, to feel good about yourself. It's so shamed upon when people are like, shout into the rooftops how fab they feel they are. And I think that's so wrong because we should be celebrating our small victories, our big victories, any victories that we may have. And nowadays it's very, very easy for someone to come back at you and say, wow, you're big headed or um, you shouldn't be saying that or you're not humble at all. When in reality, it's quite nice sometimes to have those people say, oh, well done, like that's amazing. Or um, you wear something that is completely out of what society would usually wear society would wear um and you feel so good in it and you should post that picture you should post that video what's why should somebody commenting a nasty thing on that stop you don't doubt anything that you do and that is where i'm gonna end today's video I really hope that this has helped some of you. This week, I want you to write on your stories, on your Instagram stories, three positive things that you are, okay? And I will be reposting them on my Instagram story. So please make sure to tag me and hashtag Speak Out Sundays. Um, please like this video and also comment down below if this has helped you um, or share it to a friend if someone's struggling right now. And I will see you all next week with another episode of Speak Out Sundays. Loads of love. Stay safe. Bye.